Welcome to Tools, Tech, and Gear. I'm Seth. This is the Power Queen 12.8 volt, 2432 watt hour, 190 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. The company sent this to me to do a little test and review, and that's what we're gonna do in this video. So the first thing I wanna do is hook this up to the solar panels and get this fully charged, and then we will do a discharge test to see how this battery performs based on time and the watt hours stated here on the battery. So first of all, let's take a quick tour around the battery and then we'll plug it up to the solar. You can see on the front here, it has 12.8 volt, 190 amp hours, lithium iron phosphate. It's got your negative and your positive terminals. On the top up here, it's just got a little bit more information, deep cycle battery. On the sides, it's got a carrying handle. So you can just uh, let that flop back down when not needed. Backside does show a little information there, but also has your 2,432 watt hours right here. Other side just has a handle. Now, one thing I noticed, the internals seem to be a little, I don't know, shifty inside, if that makes sense. Um, you can kind of press on here, but anyway, uh, it just seems like maybe it's, I don't know, suspended in here and not, uh, touching the bottom. It's kind of strange. All right, so that's the outside of this unit. It also comes with a little uh, instruction booklet. Just gives you a charging voltage, 14.4 plus or minus 0.2 volts. 12.8 is the operating voltage. Max continuous load, 1,920 watts and 150 amp charge and discharge. Anyway, it's just got some information in here that is really helpful for running this battery. Inverter setting, parallel versus series connection. Anyway, just some good information in this booklet. This is my current testing location. I'm actually looking to improve my testing setup here in the near future. Uh, but for now, this is what we got. So let me get my screwdriver. All right, I'm gonna hook up my negative and positive terminals to the charge controller and solar. So we can begin doing a charge here. I'll probably let this sit in the sun for a couple of days to make sure it's at 100%, and then we'll be able to get the discharge done. I'm gonna flip on the charge controller, give that a moment here. Now the sun's about gone for today, but I'm gonna flip that solar switch on, and we'll see if we have any watts coming in this time of day. Yeah, I still have about 158 or so coming in, so it'll begin to charge. We're at 13.6, so uh, let me go ahead and show you. If I go into my charge controller settings, the charge menu, the volts menu, we've got 14.6, 14.6, and 13.5 on the float, so that should be good. The Power Queen battery has been resting on the charger now for about a week, so I'm going to go ahead and flip the solar off here. And once that is done, I'm gonna do a uh, disconnect on the charge controller. Let's go ahead and cut that off. And now I can disconnect the battery and we can do a discharge test. Now that I have the Power Queen battery fully charged, it's time to do a discharge test. I have got a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter that I'm gonna use with this small heater. And I think this runs between seven and 900 watts. So we should get a pretty good draw from this battery. Now it'd probably be ideal to do a discharge of about 300 watts over a longer period of time, but I wanna get this video done. So I know this battery is uh, to spec because I've reviewed it on a different channel. Um, so that being said, Here's the test. I'm gonna hook up this drock meter and it's going to show a couple of things. It will have the, um, the amp hours programmed in, it'll have the watts being drawn from the battery and it'll also show the total um, kilowatt hours used. And so along with that meter, I'm gonna just hook up the kilowatt meter to gather the time on this unit. So, all right, let's go ahead and get this set up. First of all, this battery has been sitting for about 10 minutes off the charger. I wanted to see if it has dropped back down to about the 13.5 uh, range. So let me just stick this up here. So you can see that value. 
what do we got here? 13.9 is what it was at. So it's still dropping, um, but it is uh, fully charged here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get things wired up. So first of all, I've got my positive terminal to this inverter. And then I need to do the, uh, oh, before I do that, I've got to hook up this uh, amp reader onto this cable here. So uh, let's see, to the battery. Before I tighten that all the way down, I've got to do the positive lead of this meter. And then now we can move over here to the negative side, hooking up the negative side of my meter as well. Okay, let's see how we're doing. I'll have to program this real quick. I'm gonna push the square button to get into the settings. This is a 190 amp, so I have to wait for the light to blink over here. I can change that up to nine. I gotta hold this one down for a couple of seconds till it blinks. There we go. And now I can go back into my settings. Well, first of all, let me do this. Uh, hold down the triangle button to clear out the watts. And I'm gonna hold this one down to clear out everything else. There we go. Now you'll notice, even though I set it to 190 amp, it's still got 100 up here. To reset that, I just have to pull the power off of that unit, and then I can plug it back up to uh, get it going again, and it will reset that amp hour value. In order to use my kilowatt meter, I need to put an extension cord on here so we can still see the display. So do that. Hook this up to here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the inverter real quick. So now I'm going to do a reset and that'll give our time to zero. And now I can go ahead and plug up the load and I'm gonna turn this load on to the low setting and we'll see what we get here. Okay, we've got uh, 590 watts. 44 amps, it's a good bit. Battery's at 13.3 and we've used uh, nine watt hours so far. So let's go ahead and let this test run. Now if I scroll through here, it's been one minute right there on this uh, kilowatt meter time. So, all right. I think that's a high enough value to run this test on, about uh, 590 watts. At 2,432 watt hours, if I do uh, 2,432 divided by 590 watts is four hours or 4.1 hours. So if I return here in about three and three quarter hours, we should see this thing dropping down pretty low. Uh, let's see what we got here for the uh, amp hours, 188. So while I've been sitting here for three minutes, we've used uh, two amp hours. So it's got a while before this thing drops down to zero. All right, uh, our test is underway. I'll bring you back in a little while and we'll see how we're doing. All right, let's check our time here. We've got three hours and 49 minutes and we have used 2.2 kilowatt hours. Batteries at 12.6, uh, we have 18.1 amp hours left. And it has been running pretty consistent at about the 580 watts this whole time. Very nice, this battery is really a champ. So over here, this is showing 12.4 to 12.5 volts, but as soon as you remove this load from the battery, that uh, like 12.6 reading here will jump back up to 12.8, no problem. So, all right, 17.8 amp hours left before we end this test. And back out again. Let's see our time. We've got four hours and 10 minutes, and the amp hours are only 2.3 left. And I see the uh, kilowatt hours are 2.4, so I can't really tell the last uh, 32 watt hours. So let's go ahead and turn off our load. Get that out of here. 
All right, so currently we've got 12.2 volts on the battery, but if I turn the inverter off, we should be able to uh, pull that value back up here. It may take a moment or two to climb back up a little. Okay, now our meter is showing 12.4 volts, and I do want to uh, check the battery directly with my voltmeter and see what it shows here. Got 12.35 on that. So yeah, 12.4 seems about right. Go ahead and disconnect everything. Okay, and the results are in for the discharge test on the Power Queen battery. So we ran this thing for four hours and 10 minutes, and the beginning of the test was closer to 400 watts, but it settled into about 380. So before we said uh, 2432 divided by, uh, let's just say 580. So that's uh, 4.2 hours. And so uh, I think uh, we still had, I, I just watched it turn over to the 2400. And so we still had uh, 32 watt hours to go. And I think we would have gotten it about 10 more minutes before this thing stopped. So yes, I think it is hitting spec perfectly. So uh, if you want to learn more about the Power Queen battery or check out the other batteries that they have for sale, I'll have a link to this in the description down below. I've used this now for a couple of weeks on and off, swapping it out here in my uh, system, and it has worked flawlessly. Definitely enjoying that. Now it doesn't have um, a self-heating option, so you can't use this thing if it's below 14 degrees and you can't charge it below 32 degrees, so keep that in mind. You'll have to have this in a heated space. Now, the only thing that I have noticed about this battery that I don't like is that whenever you move it around, it just seems like something inside is a little bit, I don't know, loose. Like it, everything is suspended from the cap and that whenever you move it about, I don't know, it just seems like something in there is a little strange, but um, it seems to perform just fine though. All right, I'm Seth with Tools, Tech and Gear. Hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye. With this uh, cheap fan, cheap fan, that's a cheap heater. <laughs> oh my. Blooper reel. Okay, take seven. <laughs> From a Walmart. Probably shouldn't list the names of the places that you got your products. Just because. All right, if I get this done, lunchtime. Take eight. <laughs> Uh, you know it's lunchtime when.